Hey you guys, so it's Monday night, about 8.30 in the evening. I wanted to make some adjustments to this robot feed pusher. And the reason is because tomorrow morning we're gonna start milking our cows in a different order in the barn. So we've always milked that group first. That's group one, two, three, four. And tomorrow morning I wanna change it. We wanna start over in this corner and milk these as group one and then we'll wrap around that way. It feels like kind of a big change because we've just done it the same way for so long. I'm sure to you it seems no different. Main reason we're doing it is so that we're done crossing the middle of the barn earlier in the morning. So that way when we wanna run feed out, we're not waiting on the milkers to get done and, and get this area scraped up so we can drive through with the mixer. But I'm just gonna make this robot run a little bit earlier so that it's done going around its last lap before milking. So we're just gonna go to routes and you can set the times that all the routes run. It runs about 20 times a day or so. So right now it's set to run at 4.30. Let's do 4.10. Now we'll go 4.05 to be safe. So that'll be good for now. So should save that. So yeah, so we have 22 routes a day. That's all I had to do for now. I'm gonna be out here in about seven hours and we'll get started milking. See you guys then. The milkers are going right now. We milk three times a day. We have a lot of part-time employees that help us out. It's the only way we can make that happen. Morning, guys. 4.15, I'm getting out to the barn. It's a chilly one this morning. What's up, Casey? You smell a mouse or something? I don't think there's usually mice in there. Put our curtain up. It's a little after 4.15. The robot just made its last lap around. So if I hadn't changed the time, the robot would be running in about five or 10 minutes. And I want to open this gate now, so it'll be in the way. Feels very strange for me to go start on that group. It's really not all that much different, but I've done it so many times. It feels weird. I believe we've milked this group first three times a day for the last 17 years. This group is our first calf heifers, the young ones. Kind of makes sense to have them be group one anyway. Man, that brush sounds a little bit unhealthy. Got all the cows out, clean the stalls. Now we'll chase them over and start milking. go doesn't it look so much different we're about halfway through the milking now it's 6 a.m i'm chasing the last of this will be the new group two going back so we're done milking that whole side of the barn i'm gonna open up this group to let them in and i need to scrape that middle area up because we're done crossing the middle this is the biggest reason i wanted to make the change now we're ready to run feed out my dad's working and mixing the feed right now he's not quite ready to run out but when he is he can just come through and do it I'm about to get the last group over now. This is the old pen one. For most of the groups, this was pretty normal morning. I was about 20 minutes early for each one, but these cows had to wait. Normally they go first, now they're going last. A bunch of them are still laying down and relaxing. There are a lot of them standing though. Probably wondering what the world's going on.
third group is done milking, close them up. So now I'll, I'll let the fourth group back, the old group one. But here's where the advantage is. So before, right now is when I would be done going across the middle so then I could scrape it up. But it's already been done for a while. My dad already came through and ran feed out. Now group three, as they're getting back, there's already feed there. And group four, they haven't even started coming back into their pen. They already have feed. Usually when they come back from milking and there's feed there, they'll all, pretty much all eat. So I think that's gonna be a big advantage. When they're standing for a bit after milking, their teats have a chance to seal up a little bit better. And then when they go to lay down, it's less likely bacteria will end up in the udder. I'm gonna clean the parlor up now. I gotta scrape this alleyway. We had some warm, wet weather the last week. This is so much nicer. Just gonna get the scraper tractor. Gotta have it plugged in when it gets this cold or it won't start. No problem. Got the milking parlor cleaned up. The hoof trimmer's coming this morning. He should be here in about half an hour. I'm gonna try and hold a little bit of manure because the ground is frozen. It would be wet if it wasn't cold enough, but it's solid right now, so I should try to get a little bit of manure out that I wanted to haul. This tractor should start. It's about 20 degrees right now. Get the charger on and use a little bit of ether. Should be able to start it up. Dad's gonna get the hoof trimming list ready. To try to clean this area out pretty often so it doesn't get too full just need the right weather to actually get the spreader out this is such a breath of fresh air 20 degrees and crisp like this awesome i like to check and make sure nothing's frozen up on the spreader make sure it still slides back and the door lifts up well it's a little cold so it's slower but it's working Should just be two loads. I don't usually run skid loader in these boots. I barely have any ankle flexibility. I can hardly even move the pedals. I'm gonna go run this out. We probably have to go sort cows after this. We've had so much warm weather. The cover crop in this field has actually been growing through December. I can see little rows of uh, rye growing there now. Seeded it kind of late. About time we get some cold weather. I saw the hoof trimmer coming up the road, so I'm gonna have to stop now and we'll 
sort some cows out, get him set up. It's about 8 a.m. now. Just gonna spread a little bit of wood shavings in the alley where we're gonna put the hoop trimmer. We have trim once a month, and I filmed last month when he was here. Pretty much the same process, sort out some cows. Every cow gets a maintenance trim once a year before she goes dry. Pretty straightforward. I try to stay out his way. He, he don't mind if I film him, but I don't think he loves it either, so. Now we're sorting these cows out to trim. Not too many today. Hey, 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 hey. Nope, nope. 10 1, 805, We got about 15 cows sorted out. He's gonna work at trimming them now. I'm gonna grab some breakfast quick. Well, my cousin Jason just showed up with a trailer load of straw. I'm gonna unload these bales before we haul more manure. He turns around for me so I don't have to drive around his trailer.
I got the rest of that pile cleaned up. It didn't even quite fill the second spreader. There's no wind today and the sun's starting to come out, so the ground's gonna start getting smeary pretty quick. I just stopped in here at the hoof trimmer. The cows are turn out this way. We're just putting some cows back in their group. Kind of uh, three. We're trying to use the new group numbers and it's kind of difficult. The ground is still pretty fit. I'm gonna keep hauling until I can't anymore. We'll go to the heifer farm. There's some manure in that barn to clean out. Dad's gonna bring the skid loader. Try to clean this pen every couple weeks. It's been a few because the weather hadn't been the best. We'll just get as much as we can until it's too muddy in the fields. Hey, come on girls, head out. Head out of here, let's go. trimmer is done dad just let me know he's ready to clean up i'm gonna head up to the farm we'll come back and finish this then Got two bales in there. I'm gonna take the spreader out. Dad's gonna clean this driveway up a little bit. So I had some lunch and now I'm out here in the freestall barn. We bed the stalls three times a week and we'll do two groups at a time. So we've always done these two groups together and then we bed these two groups together on this side. But now with the, the different milking order, we're actually gonna have to bed this group, like the whole length of the barn on this side of it, and then that whole length. So it's just gonna be a little different the way we're gonna have to open the gates up. It's actually gonna be really nice this way. It's just, we never open these gates over here. I wanted to make sure they're actually loosened up. So tomorrow morning when I wanna bed stalls, I can swing these open. So we're just gonna come in that corner door. We'll be able to drive the whole, whole length of the barn, wrap around the end, do the other side of these stalls. And then the same on the other side. We won't have to cross over that middle anymore. But the really nice thing is we're not gonna have to go in the west end, which has the curtain on it. It's a little bit less convenient to open up. 
want to loosen these up a little bit, spray some PV blaster in there and make sure they're working. Well, that side's loose. It's good. This one here is not as easy. I got it loose enough to work now. Tomorrow morning when I go to bed, I'll just open this this way. This other gate goes this way. And we can drive straight through. I guess they laid this out that you could actually pen the cows over if you wanted to, to work on one side of the alley as, at a time. But all the cows are gonna be out of the group. Just need to get these gates out of the way. So really wouldn't need two gates here. We've used them several times when we were working on stuff in the pens and had to keep the cows off one side of the beds for a while. Uh, I was gonna drive around the back of the barn, but it's kind of muddy. Yeah, well, truck's dirty. I'm heading over to the calf barn. I wanna grab some skids out of there. We get a batch made one ton at a time and we pick it up at the mill. We always take our used pallets back because they'll reimburse us the cost of them. Yeah, all we had left was half a bucket. These young girls like to eat the, the feed pretty aggressively. That's good. We had some Monta Billiard calves. I showed you a couple of them when they were young. We got two growing up now. Number 29, she looks nice. And 25. I was hoping we would get one of the red ones. They can be red or black. They're still a little unique looking, but kind of similar to Holstein's. It's only three miles or something to the mill. Good. Truck in. They had a couple bags of hydrated lime that broke that they gave to us for free because they know we use it. This is calf feed we use in the calf barn, but then we transition calves out of there into the new heifer barn. So we want to have this feed to put on top of the forage that we're giving them to transition them. We always use more in the calf barn, so we added some off that other skid on this one. I'll carry those hydrated lime bags over to the shavings. Those are about seven bucks a bag, so we saved ourselves $14. Could invest that in good mutual funds and I could use that to retire eventually. Today's Tuesday, we have the straw chopper scheduled to come on Thursday. I'm gonna grind all these bales up. Put a little bit in the, the cow feed, dry cow feed. We like it ground up though. So dad's gonna take that skid up to the calf barn. I'm gonna get the shaving skid loader and we'll bed those calves up, take some bedding up there. These are all on milk. They drink milk out of the bucket and we wean them at eight weeks old. These here are about seven or eight weeks right now. So we're gonna start weaning those off. Once we pull those dividers out, that means they're off milk. This is when we stop giving them milk about this size and we wanna make sure they're eating a lot of grain at that point. This is the grain, it's got a lot of goodies in it. Corn, oats, soybean meal. Uh, there's some pellets in there, mineral, a lot of good stuff. The girl who's milking with me in the mornings, Megan, manages the, the weaning of the calves and takes care of a lot of that stuff. So I don't worry too much about it. We're back out in the free stall now. This watering trough had been leaking a little bit. Don't know if the valve wasn't sealing up right or if I uh, need to adjust something. Dad had just turned it off. He's gonna go turn it back on and we'll see if it's working now. And it's on right now. It's working.
I think we're good. You can adjust the float how far down it goes, and I guess it uh, just up a little too high and it was not stopping it. We do need to adjust these waters though. They're made to have this little bleeder line. You open up in the winter time to just let water out constantly so the line doesn't freeze. And the, the float keeps the water level lower than this drain. So that way, even though there's some leaking out, it's not spilling onto the ground. It's, it has some space to fill up before it starts leaking out. Is that too fast? No. Now to finish out the day, I need to bed the heifer barn. I was gonna do it this morning, but then we had other stuff going on. I'm just gonna sweep in this feed. All the heifers will come up to eat and then I can close the gates easily. These are the young guns out of the calf barn, giving them some of this grain. This youngest group of heifers can be a little more susceptible to health problems while they're in transition out of the calf barn. So to help cut down on the air movement in this pen a little bit, we've been setting some bales in just to kind of give them some more shelter. We put a bale back here that they pretty much destroyed now, but it just kind of helps if they want to find a roll, still a spot that doesn't have a breeze. There should be some good shelter back in here. They've been doing really well for us. So that's gonna be it for today. I'm gonna go put these clips on my computer and start editing. Pretty productive day, I feel like. Tomorrow we're going to a farm show, walk around there, be kinda nice. See you guys in the next video, thanks for watching.